In Denver, instead of rain, there was snow. Instead of mud, there was sawdust and mud. And there was Denver's punting game, which appeared almost as unique as Houston's. Oakland's Daryl LaMonica, number three, capitalized by passing to diving Pete Banaszak for the game's first score. Steve Tensey, number 13, tied the game with a scoring pass to diving Al Denson, who continues to score at least one touchdown per game. In the third quarter, LaMonica threw to number 25, league-leading receiver Fred Bolitnikov. LaMonica's second touchdown pass was also directed toward Bolitnikov. In the fourth quarter, Tinsey brought Denver back again as he hit Mike Hafner in the mud near the Raider five-yard line. Floyd Little showed he's completely recovered from his recent injury as he powered to Denver's second touchdown. But LaMonica and the Raiders had the last word. First, Darrell threw down the middle to elusive Warren Wells for 35 yards. Then he hit Pete Banaszak, who slogged and slid to the two. LaMonica's third and final touchdown went to tight end Billy Cannon, number 33, and the Raiders had beaten Denver and its weather to stay on top in the AFL West. Secured playing field. Last Sunday, the indoor Oilers brought a three-game win streak from their own safe dry carpet in Houston. The captain shook hands, and Sunday's last bit of sanity was over. Through the monsoon, number 10 chief quarterback Mike Livingston not only completed more than half his passes, he also proved he can run a little too. Not scramble, run. Number 45, Robert Holmes reaffirmed that he can cut through swamp land with the best of them. Mike Garrett plunged for the Chiefs' first score, and that was really enough to win. But there were other more exotic Chiefs scores, such as the last play of the first half. Tom Flores, number 12, set up a field goal at the Houston 40. A touchdown is better than a field goal any day. Most of the Chiefs' scoring was rather simple due to the Oilers' unique punting game. Repeating the play, we can see that being a kicker has its awkward moment. All day, most plays began as planned, but wound up being rather different from the way the coaches diagrammed them. From now on, the AFL record book will read, most fumbles both teams gained. 14, Kansas City 10, Houston 4.
Oh, yes. Kansas City won 24 to nothing. The Buffalo Bills kicked off the oldest rivalry in the AFL as they met Boston for the 20th time. Rookie Carl Garrett showed it would be a day for the young as he returned the opening kickoff 50 yards. <music> Buffalo played without its own rookie sensation, O.J. Simpson. But number 30, Wayne Patrick, filled in superbly. In the first half, the 254-pound youngster rambled 99 yards on only nine carries to give Buffalo a 13-7 halftime edge. In the second half, Boston seemed intent on derailing the Bills' ground attack, but Buffalo had defensive ideas of its own. Number 42, Butch Bird, made his sixth interception of the year, tops in the AFL, but on this play, he resorted to a different kind of thievery. Buffalo had to call on unknown number 31, Preston Reidelhuber, to win the game. He found Avon Moses for the winning margin as a rebuilt Buffalo attack fueled by youth pulled within one game of the Eastern Division League. In another Saturday game, the luckless Dolphins set out to make their own breaks. San Diego sent its runners into the line and Miami sent them right back. The Dolphins, however, had neglected to provide for a method of turning back number 27, Gary Garrison. In the space of 15 minutes, the sleek charger wide receiver gained more than 100 yards on four receptions, two of which went for touchdowns. After spending two years as one of pro football's most underrated performers, Garrison is finally being recognized for the excellent quickness, hands, and balance which mark an outstanding receiver. Garrison's second quarter spree gave the Chargers a 14-0 lead at the half. The stung Dolphins rallied behind jarring Larry Zonka, number 39, who seems to be fully recovered from early season injuries. Charger cornerback Bobby Howard has no doubts about Zonka's fitness. Miami's Bob Greasy, number 12, capped the drive with a six-yard pitch to number 89, Carl Noonan, who found just enough room in the end zone for the score. The Dolphins were in striking range of their first victory at 14-7. But Miami was frustrated once again as Chargers strong safety Kenny Graham ended a fourth quarter drive and rambled through the Dolphins for 65 wild yards in the clinching touchdown. The resurgent Chargers had kept their Western Division title hopes alive with a narrow 21-14 victory. For the past few weeks, there has been some question concerning the other New York quarterback's needs, affecting his agility and in turn affecting the team. The Jets' defense decided that they couldn't lose if the Bengals never crossed New York's 40-yard line. So they held them to that all but once during the game. Joe Namath himself, he displayed the kind of improvised rollout that looked as if he had been practicing it all week. After his pass to Pete Lamons, Namath threw to George Sauer for another 26 yards as the first quarter ended. Six plays later, it was Sauer again, and the Jets led 7-0.
Then the real star emerged as Emerson Boozer, number 32, opened up with his greatest rushing barrage ever. His blistering runs added up to a career high of 129 yards. Runs of 38 and 19 yards set up Namus' one-yard plunge and a 14-0 halftime lead. With only a minute gone in the third quarter, Jet safety Jim Richards blocked a bingo punt and linebacker Paul Crane looked briefly to see who was watching, then danced 12 yards to a touchdown while his teammates corroborated the referee's decision. The Bengals avoided a shutout when flashy wide receiver Eric Crabtree dived under a Sam Weiss pass late in the third quarter. But that was the Bengals' only flurry, as Joe's pack his back to match last season's record after five games. 